Tonight, the best and brightest artists in R&B and gospel take the stage for one memorable evening. In reverence to one of the most influential musical genres in American history, gospel is my foundation. Gospel is a celebration of faith. We're honoring the legacy of praise and worship through song. Well, since we're celebrating church and celebrate Jesus, give God a hand of praise. This is Gospel Live, presented by yours truly, Henry Louis Gates, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Erica Campbell. Good evening, everybody. Let the church say amen. Amen. Welcome to Gospel Live. My name is Henry Louis Gates, Jr. 
<laughs> and it gives me an enormous amount of pleasure to be co-hosting our concert tonight here at the magnificent Oasis Church in Los Angeles, California. Now, everybody in here knows that gospel music has been at the heart of the black experience for over 100 years. And it's influenced every form of black music from the blues and jazz to R&B and soul, and yes, even the hip hop. Tonight, we're celebrating the great tradition of black gospel music and the brilliant women and men who created it, past, present, and future. Let's welcome Erica back to the stage. Give it up for Erica Campbell. Erica, that was the most amazing rendition of Richard Smallwood and Isaac Watts' classic gospel song, I Love the Lord, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. I'm so excited to be co-hosting with you tonight. Uh, you know, I'm super proud to be a gospel artist. I've seen how the music has planted seeds of unity across the world. It brings people together, and it has the power to transcend cultural backgrounds and religious beliefs. <laughs> Amen. Now, I heard through the grapevine that you like to be called Skip. Uh-huh. But I can't just come straight out and, and just address you as Skip. I was... I was raised a little different. So <laughs> how about like Mr. Skip or Mr. Gates or? Anybody who sings as beautiful as that could call me whatever she wants. <laughs> okay, Mr. Skip it is. Okay, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Mr. Skip, we're all here because of the new documentary series mm -hmm. about the history of gospel music. So why gospel? Well, the great black scholar, W.E.B. Du Bois, famously said, that the black church is composed of three elements, the preacher, the music, and the frenzy. <laughs> and of these three elements, one sound has remained a constant source of strength, of courage, of inspiration, of wisdom, and that is gospel. It's absolutely true. So are we ready to get it started? I said, are we ready to get it started? The gospel sound has come a long way. The sound was born in Chicago between the 1920s and the 40s. That's when the father of gospel music, Thomas Dorsey, and the Honorable Sally Martin grounded the genre in traditional hymns and spirituals. Then we got classics like How I Got Over, composed by gospel singer Clara Ward, which became a church favorite and sounded a little something like this. How I got over. How I got over. Y'all remember that? <laughs> then Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirrers, who took the music in a different direction. This bridge of gospel and R&B created the lane for future artists to shine, including this singer-songwriter, who got his start as a minister of music in Savannah, Georgia. Let's welcome Molly Music. <laughs> Lord is my shepherd, he's my God, whatever I need.
Gospel music has influenced generations of performers. And the greats of the past are more than just inspiration. They're considered royalty. When I think of gospel royalty, I think of Mahalia Jackson, the Clark sisters. Aretha Franklin to me, she could do some gospel, man. Dr. Shirley Caesar. It was that first song for me. It was Jesus, Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, how I love calling your name. They are legends not just because their music is still here, but because of what they had to endure to get this good news, this encouraging message to the world. We hold them so dearly. We think of them with such reverence and love because, you know, they've gotten us through a lot of tough times. As a young girl, the greats were in my household. My mom played the piano in church, and my dad directed the choir. To me, they were rock stars. And once I watched the people be moved by the power of God, I knew that gospel music was my calling as well. Later, I found voices that rooted me in the genre. Singers like Mahalia Jackson and Sister Rosetta Tharp. They brought in blues and rock and roll, using their music to lift communities through periods of segregation and revival. Now this next singer is anointed with her own gospel revival. Earlier this year, she released her first gospel album, The Invitation, A Conversation with God. After selling millions of records with the girl group Escape, please welcome Latasha. <laughs> Jesus.
power of voice is so underrated. You know, one of my dad's favorite voices was Rance Allen. He was a vocal powerhouse, and I just loved hearing his voice on our old school record player at home, which was also furniture. He infused jazz, rock, and blues into his music, making him another one of the innovators of gospel. To celebrate him, let's welcome an R&B artist whose soulful voice was cultivated in the Shiloh Baptist Church Choir in Charlotte, North Carolina. Join me in welcoming Anthony Hamilton and the Tones. <laughs> Jesus, that song just stirs the joy of the Lord in the room. And if you can feel it, let me hear you make some noise. Yes, sir. Well, as the First Lady of the California Worship Center, we don't play when it comes to giving God praise. The spirit and presence of God must be felt. From the music of yesterday to the swag of today, church culture looks a little different wherever we go. Depending on your church, Sunday morning may look like a cool, crisp suit with gator shoes, or it may look like leather jeans and a fitted cap. And I see a few people in the crowd making some fashion statements on tonight. I know that's right. Look at your neighbor and say, you look good. <laughs> Somebody said, I do. <laughs> 
matter whether you get your ministry from the Church of God in Christ, the Baptist Church, the Pentecostal Church, AME, or CME, the Black Church experience is just like no other. Black churches share the joy of the good news in unique and often memorable ways. Let the church say amen. Black churches be like, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Black churches be like, hallelujah. Black churches be lit. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said praise the Lord, everybody. And you better say praise the Lord. Black churches be smelling like food because you're going to get a good piece of chicken after service, chicken, cake, and punch. <laughs> Black churches be loud. <laughs> yes! The service is not happening if the music ain't right. Growing up, I absolutely loved the Clark sisters. I remember learning about Jackie, Denise, Dorinda, Karen, and Twinkie, and just feeling seen. But coming out of Detroit, the Clark sisters really changed the identity of gospel music. I remember going to the Church of God in Christ convocation and seeing them sing, and I watched how some people supported them and others not so much. But when I tell you it did not matter one bit because they sang the paint off the walls. <laughs> it was their ambition that influenced everyone from Escape to Destiny's Child, and yes, even Mary Mary. Here to pay tribute to the legendary Clark sisters is a singer who got her start in her grandfather's church in Oakland, California. Please welcome the talented Lena Bird Miles. <laughs> Yeah. 
musical director Zoe Harris and the Michael Mathis Tribute Band. That was You Brought the Sunshine, which was inspired by Stevie Wonder's Master Blaster. And that is a perfect example of how gospel and R&B music blend together. Matter of fact, I see someone who, who knows a little thing or two about gospel and R&B. Plus, he's the pastor of the California Worship Center. It's my... My very handsome husband. Hey, baby. I mean, hey, Pastor. I mean, hey, baby. Hey. I mean, hi, Warren. Oh, you guys are here. Oh, you're here. Oh, excuse me. Um, now we can take a look at the influence of preachers in the Black Church. Let's hear what leadership means for spreading the gospel. It takes a lot to lead people because leadership means service. Going to church, it was family. Even with our pastor, he would go in the community and with people that didn't have food and didn't have transportation back and forth to church, they would do that. There's some pastors that holler, scream, yell, and then there's some that teach and speak softly. You never knew what Sunday you was gonna get what. Preachers often address real-time events as they unfold, but gospel singer Andre Crouch set out to do it in his music. After the turbulent civil rights movement of the 1960s, people were hungry for change. Andre exposed gospel to a younger, cooler audience, making Jesus music popular in black and white households. Then between the 1970s and 80s, compositions like Soon and Very Soon brought gospel to the world stage. Today, many artists continue his work. Please welcome the talented singer and pianist from Bakersfield, California, Shalaya. We're gonna go way back on this one. I'm thinking about grandma right now. Can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels cannot express my grace. Oh, that I am, and all. 
that I'll ever be. I, I give it all to to thee. Shalaya. Listen, the early decades produced women vocalists who could move the culture forward. And later, they would inspire the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin. Aretha transformed traditional church hymns into heart-filled soul ballads, like the classic Precious Lord, Take My Hand, a hymn created for us 
by us. A staple in gospel's catalog, this song carried us through moments of despair and today still gives us a place of refuge. Decades later, it would be repurposed by an R&B artist with roots in Springfield, Ohio's Pentecostal church. Please give a warm welcome to the extraordinary John Legend. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I wouldn't be here without gospel music. I wouldn't be here without my grandmother, Elmira Lloyd. She was the daughter of Bishop Ralph Bass, the wife of suffragan Bishop Raymond Lloyd, and the organist of our church, El Bethel Temple. I learned to play gospel music from her. And I wouldn't be the artist I am without her inspiration, without all the love and music and legacy that she poured into me. She's no longer with us, but I believe she's looking down. And I want to dedicate this song to her. Precious Lord, Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am weak.
God bless you. Yes. As we go through this night of music, I want to remind everyone that tonight's special is a compliment to Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s gospel documentary, which traces the timeline of the evolution of gospel. Like the 1990s, an era that marked a distinct separation of hip hop and gospel until one man changed all of that, Kirk Franklin. The music video Stomp revolutionized gospel sound, and his success has opened the door for the next generation of gospel artists like our next performer. Coming out of Austin, Texas, he's a celebrated recording artist with a gift for song that has translated into over one billion global streams. He's here to put a modern spin on a legendary classic. Please welcome my friend, Torin Wells. Tonight has been phenomenal. Co-hosting this special has been a great personal honor for me, both because I love the church and because I love the music that makes the church sing. And it's been amazing to see gospel continue to expand from generation to generation. Just in the last 20 years, we've seen gospel reach new heights, from Yolanda Adams performing at WrestleMania to my sister and I performing at the Super Bowl. Gospel is everywhere. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Let's thank all the incredible artists and musicians who've shared their gifts of song with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, and to everyone who helped to make this night 
so very special. And last but not least, I want to thank the great Erica Campbell for hosting this special with me. Thank you so much. Oh, it has been an amazing night, and we couldn't have done it without our fantastic musicians, Zoe Harris and the Michael Mathis Tribute Band. Yeah, Just amen. fabulous. So now, let's have a congregational moment where we can all sing together. Can we do that? Let's do it. To take us out in praise, ladies and gentlemen, let's stand on our feet and welcome Lena Bird Miles back to the stage to take us home. Come on, everybody, let's get up, let's get up and give God some praise together. Are you ready? Come on and help us. Oh, my God. 